Here's a quick look at my workflow to get the clips into Resolve and to put them into an editable format. The first step is to get the ProRes RAW footage converted into a digital negative that uh, Resolve can read. So these clips straight out of the Ninja can't be read because Resolve only likes uh, raw footage from its own cameras so if it's from anything else like a Canon or a Sony you're going to need to convert it so what I use is this program here called Assimilate uh, you can see I've got three clips that I already converted there let's bring so what the, the process is to import the clips so for example I think that's the one we were just looking at plonk that there then you select whatever clips you want to export and you render them and I'm going to put them into this grading tutorial folder. So select that, hit go, and it'll just convert that clip from ProRes RAW into DNG file, and then Resolve will be able to read it. Right, so that's now processed, so we can continue. I can now close this program. Right, here we are in Resolve in the media pool. So these are three clips that I did earlier on today. That new clip is this one here. So I'm bringing that in. Right, so there's the clip up there that we've just converted to a DNG file. Now I can bring that into this timeline. The first thing I have to do in the timeline is I go in my color page and I go to the camera raw settings here and I select clip because I'm I'm doing it clip by clip because I might have clips from other cameras or different types of clips like um, log footage etc so I convert it here to a black magic design digital negative file and straight away you can see all the highlights have come back in and everything's looking a lot more balanced than it was before when it was like this and everything's burnt out so now we've got a good starting point we can even bring the highlights further down if we want. We can look at the uh, the, the waveform over here. You know, you might want to expose it slightly higher to start with, bring down the highlights a bit more, bring up some of the shadows perhaps. Uh, definitely need to bring up some, some color. Uh, we can check that looking at the vector scope. Let's start off with it around about there. We can look at that in a minute. But this is just the initial rough balance to get, get it to a starting point. Probably a bit more contrast would look good. It's going down into the bottom here now, so you might want to lift the exposure slightly. Or even just give it a bit of a lift here. Uh, yeah, something like that. So that clip's now in Resolve. This area here is the node. This is where the nodes are, are based. And... Um, we're going to build a node tree. So we'll have an exposure, um, contrast, saturation, white balance. Probably have one for primary wheels, color wheels, which are down there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to, down here, I'm going to put at the end of the chain, I'm going to put a conversion. Because at the moment in this area here, this footage is, is in DaVinci wide gamut. So it's got a very wide gamut for contrast and exposure. But you can't, watch that on a normal TV because it won't have that range. So you have to then convert it to what's called Rec 709 at the end. So what I do is I tend to color space transform. I'll use this node here to transform it from the timeline into the output color space, which will be Rec 709. And I'm going to use what's called Cineon Film Log, which will make this picture here turn very strange looking very flat but that's okay because on top of that that's now ready for us to put a LUT on top a lookup table which is going to be this one here which is going to bring this horrible image back into more normal contrast and now with that LUT on top you're getting that stuff cinematic quality image so that's what we had that's what we've got now yeah you can use all kinds of LUTs I just tend to like this one it's a, a Kodak 2383 print emulation but there's millions of them online you find them all over the place so that's called that's our film look 
This one will be our film grain. So we do all this first because then what we're going to do up here will be underneath these LUTs. So this will, you know, affect how it comes out through this LUT. So the film grain, I'm just going to bong something on something like, uh, say, five millimeter. We push the grain strength up quite a bit. Anyway, so that's the film grain. Now we're going back up here to, this is going to be exposure. This is going to be contrast. This is going to be saturation. This is going to be uh, white balanced. This will probably be our primaries. Somewhere along this chain, we'll probably have some sort of desaturation in the darker areas of the image just to keep it clean looking and then probably over this prime here we'll have another node what's called a layer node because i'm going to do a little trick to make it give it an effect that i quite like using for this kind of film so and that's the layer node mixer disable those right so so the exposure it looks it's going very bright maybe just just the exposure down something like that our contrast, we could maybe reduce it slightly. Saturation, we can probably push it a bit more. And we're at about there. And then white balance, it looks, feels like it needs to move down so that this white is more in the center of the, in the center of the, uh, the wheel here. So we can pull this offset down towards blue. And as we're doing it, you can see it shifting. Shift, yeah, that would be more red. That would be more blue. And then we can start messing around with our primary colours. Pulling this down, we'll put more blue into the shadows. Pushing this up, we'll put more r red orange into the skin tones. And then you might want to warm up your highlights or cool them down a bit. So let's have a look what's happening there. There's car stairs arriving. So now if we look at this, where I desaturated this uh, layer node here, I'll turn it on. It's way too much. But if I pull that, the density of that one right down to zero, that's where it's doing nothing. If we just pull it in somewhere around about here, it looks pretty cool. So that throws it on, that throws it off. It's what's called a bleach bypass look. And um, it was used a lot in the 60s. Gives it more of a kind of gritty look. Maybe a bit more even of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice look. And then if we wanted to maybe add another node in here, we could put some glow. All right, just pull that threshold all the way down. Turn that to soft light, spread it, be just a very minimal amount, reduce the gain, reduce the opacity, reduce the blend, be a bit more gain actually. That's better. That's without it, that's with it on. A couple of final things that we can do is on this node, which I've already called desaturation there's nothing on there at the moment in this menu down here the curves menu along here you've got some various curves and there's one called luminance versus saturation this is sort of darkest luminance this is lightest parts of the image and if you put a point around about here you can pull down the saturation in the darkest parts of the of the image and it just helps keep the thing kind of looking clean and not too over-processed. So yeah, I like that. And then finally, there probably would be some kind of vignette on the shot. So for example, on this one, I would just probably put something quite general and soften it at the edges. So you can do something like that. And if you want to see what you're masking, you click on this button here and it shows you so at the moment it's the wrong way around we're just we're um, going to affect the center of the image we want to affect only the edges so you can down here you can reverse it so you're now just going to affect the edges of the picture and then once you've got that set up 
you just come down to your curves and you can just pull it down a bit so if you look at that on the full screen that's with it in that's with it out so it just brings your attention more to the center of the image which is where you want people looking mainly so that's it there's your look that's the uh rough version of how i put the color together for the film the briefcase